All right, it's about midnight on Saturday night and I'm at the airport about to pick up a really special guest. <laughs> Hi guys, this is Gerard from ShiftingLens.com. This is Jeremy from Black Magic Craft. He wants to ask me a question. Uh, he doesn't know what to ask me, so <laughs> let me introduce myself. But, okay. Uh, I was gonna say welcome back to Black Magic Craft, but I guess today it's welcome to uh, Shifting Lands. Thank uh, you. Who are you? And why are you in my house? <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, you opened the door, so <laughs> I got into your house. Okay, I'm Gerard. I'm the guy behind Shifting Lands. To be quite honest, I invited myself. It's true, he did. I did. This is the man that's behind a lot of the accessories and MDF jigs and tools that I use that help me make what I do. So if you're unfamiliar, that's the quick, quick and, answer. And actually, that's also the reason why I'm here, because I think, Jeremy, we had contact about the jigs and I sent you the jigs. You, yeah. made, you made a video. A lot of people after that find their way to Shifting Lands. At that point, I already thought, how cool would it be? to pay you a visit. First of all, to say thank you for supporting me, but also I think it would be fun to discuss a bit about the hobby. The hobby and what we and, do. Uh, yeah, what we and do. I've used a lot of your stuff in the past. Yep. I talk about it all the time. And to be very clear, Shifting Lines is not a sponsor of the channel. Not you have all. never paid me a dime. And I, I don't expect you to. No. I, I use I, them because I like them. That's I didn't it. even pay him dinner yesterday. But That's I, true. I, I will today. You owe me, I will a, do you owe me today. a dinner. But yeah, okay. We didn't plan this very well. As you can uh, see. <laughs> you know, we wanted to come for a visit. I didn't really think about it too much other than, cool, we'll get to meet and hang out and do some different things. And in my head, I knew I would use this week to film. Of course, I'm going to use it to film a, an episode for the week. Yep. And in my head, I pictured, well, maybe we'll do like a normal... Black Magic Craft episode where there's a build, but instead of me, it's you building and we'll document yeah. it. And that was the yes, plan. Sure. Yep. But as soon as you got here and we started talking and you started playing with the foam yep. that I have, mm -hmm. we proved a theory that I've had for a very long time. And that has sort of taken over everything we've done and talked yes. about. Now there's no build and that's what we're going to focus on. Yep. I have been seeing the work that you've been doing and mm -hmm. the people who do your workshops do. Yep. And I've always looked at it and thought something is different Difference. here. The way they are working <clears throat> with the foam using pencil etch etching, I've never been able to succeed doing those techniques very well. Mm -hmm. When I first started, I started with that sort of Technique. technique yep. and I got frustrated with it and it didn't really work well, mm -hmm. which was a blessing and a curse because that's how I then moved on to developing and trying different things. Mm -hmm. And I moved into a totally different kind of building. We yep. discussed that yep. the best way to summarize it is that the way I build is additive yes. where I will make a form and put layers on it of bricks and stones and mm -hmm. add to a structure. The way you work is more subtractive, like a traditional yep carver Actually, where you will yes. take a form and remove from it yep. and create right on there absolutely and i always thought the reason i must be struggling is because the foam is different so when he was coming and he asked what do i bring is there anything you'd like i only asked for two things yes one was candy dutch candy absolutely and the other thing was an example of the yep. green foam the, the green foam the hard foam that I see you using so that I could see yep. if I was just bad at doing it or if there was a difference. Mm -hmm. And he did. And I knew immediately I was right. There is. We went to Home Depot yesterday, picked up some fresh pink foam that I have access to. Yeah. And I basically gave it to you and said, go to town and let you play outside with it for a bit yep. while I was doing stuff. And yep. what did you discover? First of all, yes, there is a difference. Absolutely. Now it makes so much sense sense why you build the way you build and why I build the way I build. The main difference between the pink foam and the green foam is this is very elastic. So if I press it, it goes and it comes, comes back. Out, comes back. Not, not all the way, but it comes back. If I press this one in, it stays in. If you work with a foam that is more elastic and if you are used working with a pencil, with a sharp pencil, with mm -hmm. a blunt pencil, and you want to work in layers 
but it's only one sheet. This is way more difficult okay. because it comes back with, with this and this is fun. I'm very pleased to have uh, experiment with, with this foam yeah. because I've never used softer foam and I would normally never use this kind of mm -hmm. foam because of the elasticity. Since this is the only foam I have available which is the only foam that I have available and I know the only foam a lot of you have available because yeah. in North America we mostly have this pink foamular mm -hmm. yep. and then the blue foam by Dow okay. which is actually as we played with a little bit even slightly softer Absolutely. than this yep. one. Yeah. And I discovered that if you, you apply the right technique I can actually use this foam as well in a way that I can work in layers, in yeah. two or three layers within one sheet. This is already so much worth it yeah. for me to, to, discover pay, to pay a visit and to discover how to actually work in foam, in this type of foam, almost in the same way mm -hmm. as I'm used working with and the green. If you don't have access to it, you can use different things. It's taking the inspiration and the idea and, and trying and developing techniques or ideas with what you have available. When I worked with this foam, tried your techniques and yep. was frustrated by it not mm -hmm. working the way I expected it to, yes. I wrote off those other techniques too quickly. Yes, I should true. have come back to them, maybe after learning more, yep. trying different things, mm -hmm. come back with a new perspective and try it again. Mm -hmm. And I and I haven't. And that's really limited a lot of the things that I build or how I build them. Because I work in this way of adding to a structure, that creates a lot of limitations on depth. And it's kind of difficult to explain, but the way you work in layers of cutting out a a window mm -hmm. because you're drawing on every texture all parts of the foam become the foam the, the form the form but yes. if i have a flat piece of foam and i add individual bricks to it or wood planks yeah. and then i cut out a window then there's this ugly layer yes that doesn't quite work and yeah. i could then go in and texture that yeah but somehow the combination isn't as believable if mm -hmm. it's all in a similar and the method. way and the way you explained this now I think, man, that's way more work <laughs> than the way I do it. Don't get me wrong. I mean, the way you work, when it works, it's okay. It works. It works. And the way I work, okay, it works for me. The thing is, you can you can change the way you work. And you sometimes you can use combine both. Combine them. Or Absolutely. Project, one project might be better for this, one project might be better Absolutely. for that. What I've learned from working with the ping foam is that both have their advantages and disadvantages. Yeah. Basically, you can work with, with both. With both, which or, means or, you or can, something else too. You can work with any type of foam. Yeah. Uh, this is foam from a company in Germany, mm -hmm. BASF. The name of the foam is Styrodur, and the type Styrodur foam is CS3000. I started uh, actually using the press technique. Mm -hmm. So what, ha what have I done? I've made this little wall element with wooden beams and bricks. You can mm -hmm. actually get a lot of depth in your project by simply using a blunt or a sharp pencil, exacto knife and your piece of foam. When you set up yesterday to start playing with this and yeah. I gave you a pencil and a knife, what was the first thing you made me do? Or first thing you asked if you could do with that pencil? Because it's important. Yes, my pencils are short. Now this is a also a, a, not a full pencil, but this is way too, too long. long. Watch the pencil where it is. And as you can see, the pencil is in my hand, but I have fully control and it's very flat. It lays flat on the sheet. So I have full control of my pencil. I can move it in any direction without any limitation. Now let's try it with this one. This is not possible. So I have to put it like this. I'm forced to get hold of my pencil in a, for me, unnat unnatural mm -hmm. way, which influences my control. This pencil is a uh, HB, which means it's between soft and hard. Mm -hmm. The harder your pencil is, the less black will show on the foam. If it's uh, the more to the B, mm -hmm. the B side, the B4, the, the B5, the softer side, you will see more black. There are people, uh, as I said, I do a lot of workshops, they, they have all these dentist tools mm -hmm. they use for 
um, well, getting a little getting details in. getting the details in, which is perfect. Mm-hmm. But you don't see what you do because not not any black is coming from those metallic tools. And and that's what I found interesting about this is that as you're working, you have a clear image of what you're working Thinking on. on. Yeah. And when I was attempting these kind of methods originally with pink foam, I found it difficult to use the pencil because I hadn't figured it out yet. Uh-huh. So I would often draw it with a knife first yeah. and then come back with the pencil. But of course, if you're trying to draw an inter- intricate pattern yes. with a knife, you're kind of drawing blind. Yes. And it, it, it's, it's yes. really difficult to do a large piece that way. I wanted to have really sharp lines. Mm-hmm. So with the X-Hector knife along the lines, I made this small, a very incisions. shallow cut. Yes, so I get sharper lines. Let's say this is uh, plaster, uh, which means that the plaster here has fallen off. As you can see, now I'm going one level down. Now this is not unlimited, which means I can remove up to uh, one and a half millimeters in total. And then after that, you can't go any further. You can't further go any further. It. I can go for organic stones, like round stones, irregular stones, but let, let's make it easy. Let's make bricks. So, so here you have, let me see. So now we have three layers. We have the wood, the plaster and the stones. To make the plaster more plaster, I make I do a little bit of, well, how do you call it? Help me out here. A uh, little, little bit of <laughs> up and down. Up and work. down. And, and, then, and then I make a little crack. Crack. Yeah. With this foam being as denser than the pink, it's a little bit more forgiving with the tearing. Yes. You were able to replicate yeah. your same techniques yeah. on pink foam. Yes. It's just a little bit more challenging. Yes. It certainly is possible to work in this method. Absolutely. With the harder foam, it's more easy to actually go in a specific angle and actually go into the foam mm-hmm. and make a deeper incision. With this, I would not do it. So I, I draw a line, I take my X-Hecto knife. So this is something you really have to do. Yeah, and this is what makes the process slightly less efficient with this foam. Yeah, well, But if you want to yeah. have this effect, you can still achieve it. Yeah, so I have a base and just so you know, it's it's one piece. I made an incis- incision two millimeters deep, and then from the side. So this is one sheet. Just with a knife. Yeah. Not with a hot no, wire. Just, just with a knife. Freehand. I bolted it. From then I made the base. One S- single solid, piece of foam. Single piece of foam, and uh, the sides are in an angle. Yeah. Which actually is simply eyeballing it, putting it on the fence along the wire. One. Two, so this three, you, four. Did, you didn't adjust your wire to no, an no, angle. No, no, no. I just, I just freehanded it. I freehanded it. Oh. If there is any difference in the angle, you will not see it. Yeah. Now, if you look at the windows, the smashed window, you c- can see a lot of depth done by simply taking two sheets of foam, put it here on this. You can go. You could do six layers you can and go add wild. a lot of yeah. complexity. Yes, but also within those two layers, a, f- a very simple thing like cutting away a little strip so it goes in yeah. at a specific angle. It all adds to the detail. And then detail. you can go back in and start adding yeah. your yes. stonework, which this is the perfect example of where this method excels versus how I do. So yeah. for this, I could build this in with additive sure. building. And then sure. from, from the outside, if you only look at it at this view, P- looks same, perfect. same thing. Absolutely. But it's once you start cutting into it here, this would be very difficult for me to do in the way that I do, Mm -hmm. because the only way for me to achieve this is to actually lay these little individual bricks, which on a flat surface is easy and I enjoy it. Mm -hmm. And I think that's important is there's lots of different methods. Do the one that you enjoy the process so that you like doing it. I like doing that on a flat surface, but something like this, no way. It reduces the options for me. So this allows you to do all sorts of things. It's just, it's essentially this piece, yep. right? Double. That yep. you've gone in and drawn your stonework in. Yep. And you've drawn in the border, yep. the archway of the window, yep. and the wall brick. And push it back a bit. Yeah? This is pushed in a, slightly, but the average Half person might not be able to tell. Half a millimeter, yeah. Even without paint, 
they're distinctly yeah. different, which is important. You've achieved that by simply not using your pencil to texture this stone. So this yeah. is like a very smooth... This could be a marble yeah. window with uh, local bricks. Yeah, whatever. even though yeah. this is one piece of foam and it's just lines, you can still create that Absolutely. distinction. You've solved the other problem mm -hmm. with the technique that you do that I face, a problem for me is uh, I'm doing a structure of two walls. Uh, yes. If I do a form uh, yeah. and then if I'm placing bricks, yes. I can actually do them in the real way where yep. one overlaps and it overlaps and yes. they interlock. If you draw your stonework on here and you draw your stonework yep. on you here, seam. you put it together and there's a very unrealistic, not interlocking seam. Just approach the design in a way that solves that problem yes. by putting in these wider detailed columns which is just yes. a rectangle of foam sure. that is independently interlocking yep. and they butt in but it adds another dimension of depth yes. so it, it adds to the yes. to the effect every material or technique is going to create some sort of drawback or yep. hurdle that you have to overcome come. there's yep. no one that is universally nope. solves all problems and nope. it's all about figuring out how to work within that constraint and not yep. just fix it but actually use it to your advantage to Absolutely. create something. Yes. Because you're doing these layers like this, very thin layers, once mm -hmm. they come together, they create a very natural, appropriate to scale wall thickness. Yes. A lot of techniques and a lot of builds ends up getting very blocky and thick and, and chunky. Yep. Builders, especially newer builders, have a tendency to make everything too large, bulky. too yep. bulky. Yep. It takes a little bit of refinement to get things nice and thin and this method lends and now, itself really well and now it's really and now it's even better because even now, easy to break it and... I've, now i broke a stone in a way that it's more natural so although if you look like this it from this angle it looks irregular it's yeah. look natural if you look on top then all the stones are at the same level so i can actually alter this you, you by can simply offset your breaks and your grout lines and, and and there again, you here you're using the layers to your advantage rather than yeah. trying to disguise this seam. Yeah. You just make it look like it's two, two layers stones. of stone yeah, and highlight it. Yeah. All these tiles are first drawn with a sharp pencil, then with an X-Acto knife cut in very slightly, and then go work one edge down. So that it's yeah. almost slanted. So, yes. And I do it. I turn it around, take the next one and do the same thing. And I do it with every and tile. And this way they're not all in the same direction. They're not on the same direction. And you get, again, a lot of depth adding to the, the atmosphere. It's, it's, it's an old structure. Everything is uh, wobbly bobbly, yeah. as we say. Yeah. If you dry brush it, it, it looks great, it looks really I think. Well. I've designed these cylinders. These are solely made, designed for applying structure into foam. So I, I tell it very clearly, they are designed for hard foam. If you want to do, try it on any other substance, please do so, but don't come to me if it doesn't <laughs> yeah. work. Because it's meant for um, this. Yeah. The lines are very sharp deep. and very deep. So here we have the structure of the more let's say organic brick. natural brick yep. work yes it works fine on the green foam uh, and it creates a very deep yes impression it's very deep and yep. the the grout lines are very flat mm -hmm. like they're very evenly yep. indented and there's no yep. tearing it's a cylinder so you have a stick to get it through mm -hmm. And now you can put, apply, a lot, apply of, a lot of pressure and roll it in one go mm -hmm. towards you or away uh, from you, realizing that you work with another Different foam. foam. How does it? How does it work? And we tested it on the pink, the pink, and it works. Yeah, but not as no, not as that's well. again because yeah. of the elasticity. Yes. So it doesn't go quite as deep. No, but still, and it comes back. But it still has a defined pattern. If you take the care to paint it, it's going to come out looking almost as good. It yes. just requires a little bit more care with your dry brushing. Yes. And yes, maybe like a wash isn't going to settle as easily. Absolutely. But it's still Absolutely. really viable. If you take an aluminum foil bowl mm -hmm. and first you apply some kind of structure with the aluminum foil and after that you use your cylinder you get the same structure but all your stones with the stone pattern yeah. as opposed to i think a natural inclination is to roll yeah and then put your texture yeah but 
that can distort and push it will. the the pattern it will and more so on this Absolutely. elastic foam so first apply structure with an aluminum foil ball and then apply structure yeah. with your cylinder now these are something that you sell in your yeah. shop yes they're, they're available yes but you brought something really cool to yes. show me actually i i challenge all the viewers to make their own cylinders which yeah. sounds totally crazy because i have eight cylinders now that i sell but you go to your home depot store and you get this gray tube yeah so water, this uh, would be for north americans what you'd be looking for is going to be pvc pipe in, yeah. the, in the plumbing department yes uh, and this one probably not the hard one the yeah, softer there, there's one, yeah? different ones what might actually be good if you want a softer one is there's black abs pipe that we use for plumbing okay. here would probably work quite well the larger the diameter the more work take a piece you roll sticky tape and with a fine liner you draw, you draw any, your pattern. Any, any pattern you like. You take your Dremel tool with a, a, a metal engraving tool, your, a metal drill kind of tool, yep. and simply start engraving so along the lines. With a lot of patience. Yes, 20 hours. You can go you through it. and make something like this, Absolutely. but you don't want to screw it up. No, so <laughs> actually with every piece you engrave, you have to be so focused because if, if you, you go through a line, yes, hopefully you can adjust that stone. But yeah. if you can't, then there are absolutely in this over uh, here. There's there's a little failure. Yeah, uh, and, and, and large a, a small stone tend to be a large stone if you make a failure. It will take you roughly, I think, twenty hours or so to to produce something like that. It's a lot of time, but if you pull it off. It you have a great. cylinder and, for life. And also, there's the advantage of if you don't want to spend the money. Yep. There's always a way to make it yourself. Just like yes. people ask me if they want <clears throat> one of these guides. Yeah. You know what? If you don't want to pay for it, just build it yourself. Just, just make something for yourself. Yeah. Why not? But if you want the convenience, you want something that works. Yeah. You know, the option is there. Yes. And you can start with a pattern. This is a, maybe a little bit intimidating, yeah. but something like this you could approach. If you make this yourself, yeah. then you have a 100% unique Absolutely. pattern. And people yeah. ask me sometimes why I don't use rollers more. And it's because I like the idea of my stonework being my, it doesn't yep. exist anywhere else. So this you yep. could make a yep. totally original, it's like a fingerprint, Absolutely. it's yours. It's your fingerprint. And maybe a final tip, if you've never done it and you want to give it a go, just try to make one inch all around and then start rolling it to, to see, see how, it, how it works. And if you like what, you, what, you, what you've done, then continue then down. Continue don't, down. Don't do a whole strip on one side. No, work, work in around. rings. Work in rings, yes. You've shared a lot of information and ideas in a very limited amount of time, but mm -hmm. you of course have lots of knowledge to share. Yes. What are the ways that my viewers can learn more? more? I have my own YouTube channel uh, on my name. Not, it's not Shifting Lens, but it's Gerard. Gerard Boom. Yes, that's my name. And uh, there are three videos. <laughs> Yay, hey, three videos. But they're there. That they're, okay, sure. Absolutely. But the main way that you share what you do yeah. is through your workshops. workshops. Yes, yeah. I do a lot of workshops. I really do a lot of workshops. I did 60 plus workshops so far. And I've seen yeah. photos from these workshops. People yeah. come in. I, I'm assuming some of them are new people. Yes. Incredible what they're yes. doing very quickly learning. Yes. It's yeah. When I'm doing workshops, I learning the people what I know, all kinds of techniques, but also telling them how to work with all the tools and they can play around with all the tools. And then you see what they struggle with. And they, I see what they struggle with. They come with the most insane questions, <laughs> but insane questions that need an answer. They need an answer. And sometimes that answer is a new tool. Early this year, I started working with uh, Michael. Uh, from East, Tabletop from Workshop. Tabletop right. Workshop. Uh, we are making a book. Okay. Not a PDF. It's a hardcover book. And it's all about building in hard foam. We will work with difficulties like from uh, relatively easy up to very complex. Actually, this is what I would see as a simple project. Yeah. Thank you for visiting me from yeah, so thank you. far. Yes. Thank you guys for watching. Wonderful. If you liked the video, hit the like button. Let us know what you think in the comment section. And of course, check out shiftinglands.com. But you've heard yeah. me say that many times. It's already yeah, on my too website. Many. You, forget you, it, you forget it. Don't, don't. Okay. <laughs> okay. Cheers guys. Bye-bye. See you again next Wait. week. Bye.